Hi everyone, I'm Kathy Lenatra, State Representative of the 12th Plymouth District, representing the towns of Kingston, Plimpton, Halifax, and parts of Plymouth, Duxbury, and Middleborough. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Profiles with Kathy Lenatra. Our district is such a unique and diverse place, filled with interesting and inspiring residents working behind the scenes to support their neighbors and community. We are blessed with dynamic programs, events, and services that enrich our lives. I wanted to take a minute each month to highlight the unsung people, programs, and events that make this district so special. I hope you enjoy these stories as much as I do. On today's show, we will be joined by Sharon Collins of Kingston. Sharon has navigated every part of the foster and adoption system in Massachusetts. After being adopted as a baby, Sharon decided to pay it forward and help kids who were in her position, so she decided to become a foster parent herself. She saw the ins and outs of fostering many different kids and saw many of the difficulties foster families experience. Because of this, she decided to start the South Shore Foster Closet to assist foster families in getting needed items like diapers, clothes, and shoes. They have expanded into a small house where families can come and shop for free. Sharon, thanks so much for joining us no, here thank today. You for having me. Thank you. So, for me. let everybody know that we've known each other for quite a while now, we and have. we met. We were on the same all women's softball team in Pembroke about 15 years ago. A long time ago. Yes. yes. <laughs> and you would show up, and your children were so young, and you would put this little picnic table up, and they'd sit behind and watch us and eat their little snack. And I believe I was pregnant with Jack at the time, or Lydia. Um, I think I played two seasons pregnant, yes. but <laughs> it's so glad that you could join I'm us. Glad, I'm glad I came. So if you could just tell everyone, let's start with you. Okay. So let's start what you, how, why you decided to become a foster mom. Just tell us your story, because I know that you were adopted, but not everybody here does. So I was adopted as a, a, a young, young baby uh, toddler, um, and I grew up, my two siblings were also adopted. Um, I, I have two younger siblings. Um, so I, it's always been in my blood, I guess, and um, I always wanted to. Uh, but, you know, I got married, and I had my own two kids, and my marriage just didn't work out. Um, so there was just never a time, or the right time. So then when I, um, I divorced um, about nine years ago, and I like, that, this is going to be my goal. I'm going to own my own house house and I'm going to um, go on vacations and I'm going to foster. So six and a half years ago I became um, officially a foster um, uh, mother and I took in my first um, newborn baby. I remember um, and that. It's, and it's been yeah. since. Ever uh, since. Yes, ever since, yes. So now that you brought up traveling, I, I just have to say how, I know you go on these amazing trips and you bring these children with you. Yes. So, and sometimes it's last minute. Yes. So how do you work that? Um, it's not so much, uh, we can't do it last minute with the right. COVID, but yeah. pre-COVID, I would just call them up and say, um, I don't have a babysitter. I'm, I'm going to buy an airline ticket for this child <laughs> and he's going to come with us to Outer Banks or yeah. he, we're going to, I'm going camping for the weekend. And they're like, well, can you take these two kids too? Like, yep, come on. Um, so I went out and I bought a minivan so I could fit, fit all of them <laughs> in and we, camp with six kids, um, you know, that uh, many of them have never been camping, they've never stayed in a hotel, they've never swam in, um, in you know, an outdoor, in-ground pool, um, and why not take these kids to give them experiences that they've never had? I think that's wonderful. And how do they seem to get along? So you have children from all different families that come, yes. sometimes all at once, yes. sometimes in the middle of the night, you yes. said. Yes. How do they, how do you make sure that they get along? How do the dynamics work? Um, well, my um, 19, I have a 19 year old and a 17 year old, and so they're, uh, you know, very, they're veterans at this. Um, mm -hmm. So usually um, when someone comes, we always bond over snacks, snacks. and candy. Um, <laughs> and let's go outside and we'll open the garage door and I have probably 20 different bikes, uh, ride on toys. And we just all uh, gather in, in the back, my back driveway behind my house with all the snacks and the potato chips and the juice boxes as they want. And kids, they meld, yeah. that, you know, they, they're here, they may forget, you know, what's ha what happened with their mom and dad yeah. yesterday, um, just for a little bit. 
So here's, here's a lollipop. Uh, here, here's a fruit roll-up. Here's some kids about your age. And they don't care. They all just c come together. And they get on the ride on toys, and we just play. And hopefully it's a nice day out. Yeah. And they play until it's time to have chicken nuggets and juice boxes <laughs> and have a bath. And let's watch Mickey Mouse Club for the 20 millionth time. And it just all comes together. It all comes together. Yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. Let's talk about your kids. So okay. I've, I've known your kids for a while. How... Was it a family decision to foster? Because that's a big deal when you have two older kids and to bring in uh, other kids, and you have a dog too, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, to bring in other kids, how did you get them on board? Um, so my 19-year-old Katie was always like, yeah, let, let's just do this, mama. <laughs> she, she loves kids, and you know, her and I are very similar, yes. like let's help, let's play it forward. Um, my son Thomas, he was a little bit more reluctant, like, eh, I don't, I'm going to have to share my room with these kids. And like, yeah, well, we have a pretty small house. They can't sleep on the couch. They yeah. can have, um, so he was a little reluctant, but like we went forward anyways, and he's just as well, he does it just as well as Katie. Katie does it now. Um, like tonight, like Thomas, um, I need to go out. You, you're gonna need a babysit. Oh, okay, mom, I was gonna go up with my friends, but I'll <laughs> stay. With, I'll stay. I'll stay home. Um, so he's. They've c come around, and I think um, I haven't taught them lessons, but the fostering has taught them lessons that I can never. You can never get out of a textbook or telling them. You know, integrity, br yes. bravery. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, willingness to adapt. Um, they see not only in their own lives, but in, they see these in the children that, that come into our houses, um, how brave they are, how strong they are, what they've gone through, and they know how blessed they are. And compassion too, and right? Compassion, compassion yes. for others, which we seem to be lacking so much lately. So yes. it's so, I'll wind up crying, but <laughs> it's so wonderful to see. Um, I, and I like to see the bonds that Thomas has with the younger kids. Yes. They adore him. <laughs> they do. Absolutely yes. adore yes. him. And he's just so good. He's such a good big brother, even if it's just for a short time. Yes. Sometimes he's reluctant, but yeah. um, he, you know, he'll be out there. Thomas, my bike, my dike, bike, dike, my bike doesn't work. Yeah. Right out with the, the, um, the screwdriver to fix the bike. He's more into that. While Katie, they're like, run, well, Sharon's a little bit mad at me, Katie, so she, they run to Katie, uh, like, like, can you get me a snack? Because Sharon said no, you know, that kind of, that kind of stuff. So um, they play, um, they play, play different them. roles. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah. That's, that's so great. And your dog must love all the attention. Yeah, we had two dogs, and they were both, um, one of them died a few I'm years sorry. ago, but they were both very, um, I don't know if they came to be that way, or they've always been that way, but they're I had a, a, a little boy that I just had for the day yesterday tugging on the dog's ears, and she just sat there and looked at him. She didn't bark. She didn't turn on him or nothing. Um, she, they're just, they've come to adapt as well as the rest of us have adapt. They're kind of like therapy dogs. He's they like are. a therapy dog yes. without the therapy training. They just know. Learned. They somehow they sense that. I, mean, I think a lot of dogs, um, yeah. and maybe cats, I don't know about cats, but do that. They just sense that yeah. these kids need, need something. So when you do, sometimes like you do get a child to call in the middle of the night yes. where it's an emergency situation. Yes. What is the length of stay sometimes? Like you just said, you just have one for the day. Yes. But you've have, do you have children for years or? Um, yes, yeah, so I have children. Like yesterday was just a day. I was just helping someone out. Mm -hmm. But in the middle of the night, it's usually, if they call me in the middle of the night, it's just usually for the night. They'll call um, and tell me. Um, you know, at two o'clock in the morning, it's the police are, um, well, it's actually the agency, but the police are in the background. Um, you know, something happened. Um, can you take this child? Yes. So that's usually just for a night. And then I'll, sometimes I'll have someone for a weekend, a week, a month. The longest I've had um, is two and a half years, which is the child yeah. that I'm, I'm in, a, in the process of adopting. So, so it, it can be. Yeah. talk about her. <laughs> yes. So she's five. She's five. She's yes. five. Yeah. And where you've had so many children, what drew you to this little girl? And you knew that she needed to be part of your family. I people ask me that all the time. I'm sure. Um, and when I went into fostering, I was never going to adopt. Like I was going to play it out till my kids were in their 20s and then I was going to be done and then I was going to go off and hike mountains and <laughs> um, travel by myself and wake up at 10 o'clock in the morning and um, there was just she I uh, she walked up the the driveway I had taken her for a, a week um, for another foster family and I knew when she walked up that she was mine I, I don't know how I, I can't knew. people don't believe that but that's that w it was the truth um, and I haven't felt that I felt that way about a 
couple of others, but um, nope, and that's just the way it's gone. I don't know. It I can't even say be. that. Yeah, it was right. meant to you be. You really yes. felt that yeah. it was meant to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for families that really aren't familiar with the foster care system yeah. or um, how it operates and, and how what the need is for children. Yes. Can you explain like what a soft landing would be? Do you know what that is? Like a soft, is a soft landing mean? Having a, it's like, no. They, well, um, many of them are not coming as a soft landing. Okay. Yeah. So many okay. of them, you're getting called in the night. Right. Um, can you take this child? And, and they don't, and often um, the agency or DCF doesn't have a lot of information about this child because they've just picked them up. Right. Um, so sometimes you got to go with your gut, like yeah. with, the, um, with the gut, or you have to go with, um, I always think, Children come into my life for a purpose. Yep. Um, it may not be the purpose that I think that they're there for, or they, it may be hard, or it may be sad. Yeah. Um, but I, I got I got this call rather than someone else got got the call. So I'm going to give it give it my best shot. And sometimes these kids are more than what I can handle, and right. they move on to a a better a better house or a better environment or a better home um, that can handle that. But I'm always Let's let's give it a shot. Yeah, for most of them, yes. And we've talked offline um, the need for foster families, and especially for older children. Yes, right. Yes, it's the teenagers. Can you talk a little bit about our teens? Do you get many teenagers? Um, yes, I, lately I have been um, because um, there's been just a lot of an, a large influx of children coming in to the system um, due to um, COVID opening up and the school and the, the new school year with everyone back in school. Mm -hmm. um, so I've had a lot of teenage um, girls um, for uh, for a variety of reasons, and it's just. Um, it's sadder than me getting a two-year-old or three-year-old. The two-year-old and three-year-old don't often understand why they're here, but mm -hmm. hey, this, she's got toys and she's got fruit roll-ups, we'll, yeah. we, we, we'll be fine. Well, the, the teenagers, it's sad because they know why they're there. Um, and they know that it's, it's, it's often harder to find homes for teenagers um, because you know they're teenagers right. and sometimes teenagers are a little harder to take care of than a two-year-old would be and you know the two-year-olds are the blonde and blue-eyed um, kids and the oh how cute yes. well teenagers don't get that and they get right. a bad rap when I, the t teenage girls I've had in the last few months are like we sit down and we're you know shooting the, shooting yeah. the crap yeah. and yeah. you know hey let's get some popcorn let's watch a movie and they come in expecting um, me to be the same way that they've been treated often are like no that's that's not gonna happen at this house you know um, you respect me and I respect you and we're gonna get along fine and I've, I've had some good experiences with teenagers and I hope that people going forward will consider teenagers um, if they were to be a foster uh, family because they're just they're great kids most yeah. of them that just get a bad rap so you must we're going to get into the foster closet. So what prompted you? Was it see, having all these children come to your house with basically nothing, right? Yes. So when they come to your house, I've heard the stories, it's just a green trash bag. Is that the way that it is? Um, often less. it's nothing. Really? Um, the ones that come in the, the middle of the night um, or the ones that have just been removed, oftentimes they're coming literally with just the clothes in the back. I've had a child come with um, a man's t-shirt on and nothing else, no underwear, no socks, no shoes. Oh um, just so there, there was a huge need um, for that, um, for clothes and shoes and diapers and um, jackets and things of that nature because oftentimes they're either coming with nothing or they're coming with a trash bag full of stuff you like literally have to throw away. You do. It yeah. smells, it's yeah. got bugs. Um, it's too small. Um, it's girls clothes for boys. I'm not sure where it all came from. Um, so um, I, like most foster parents who do, mm -hmm. who do these regularly, take kids and regularly, we have bins of clothes that will, but a lot of people don't have the room for that or they right. don't have the, the wherewithal to be able to get these type of clothes. So that's how the, the closet came about. I will say I've, I've dropped off a lot of things at your house and yeah. a lot of other people do and you guys are so organized I can't stand it. I'm so jealous how organized you are. So the foster closet started small, mm -hmm. right? And now you've grown. So yes. I hear that you're in a house now. Like, where are you now? Yeah, we are um, at on Tremont Street in, behind um, Duxbury Church. Okay. Um, Duxbury Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. um, we were... We, um, 
three or four years ago, um, we were able to get, um, we secured a spot within the, the church building itself. It's a very that. large yeah. um, church building. I mean, we were there for like three or four years, but the, we always noticed that there was a house behind the church that was, well, I don't think it was abandoned, but I don't think, they didn't use it for anything except for maybe storage. You're like, wow, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great if we could just have this house? And finally, we got up the courage um, at the beginning of the year. Um, can we take the house over? And they're like, sure. Um, wow. So we, um, I, I can't take credit for most of the, um, the work that was done on the house. My partner in crime, um, Jean, and her husband um, got a crew together and um, ripped out bathrooms, put in new windows. Oh, wow. um, Painted, repainted, got rid of the um, the dirty, the dirt and the yeah. spiders and all of that, and we opened up um, officially at the end of the summer. Um, in a much, it's a much bigger. We can um, accommodate much more, many more clothes and more shoes and more coats, um, so that people can come twice a week to um, oh, shop wow. for whatever they need. So did the children come too? Do they get to shop for their own yes, things? Yes, um, uh, was, it was fun. Uh, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But last week, there was an eight-year-old, I had an eight-year-old girl come in with um, her foster mom, and she was just so oh. excited. Like, she thought this, it was like Target. Um, but, you know, and it, I was just like, she goes, can I take this? Like, take as much <laughs> as you want. Look, we got plenty. Here, here's another bag. Take another paper bag. So she went home with like two, two paper, uh, you know, two big paper bags full of clothes that she, she, I don't, she needed desperately. She needed, she got to pick out herself. She, she picked out herself, um, and all for free. And she was um, overweight. Yeah. So like, you know, um, she didn't have, there wasn't, she didn't come with many choices and there's not a lot of many choices mm -hmm. to go out to the stores with. So she, she came away with bags of clothes that all fit, were oh. all clean, they all smell good. Yeah. And she's gonna go, you know, she's going to go to school the next day dressed like, the other a kids. million bucks, right? Because and, and she's like going to look, bucks. and she's going to look like the other yeah. kids, and she can, even if she isn't like the other kids, you, she can have that image that makes her feel good about herself. I think that's so important. Yes, it is. So, what are some of the things that you need? So, you mentioned sizes. She was a little larger, so maybe yes. larger sizes. We need large, like. Uh, husky, mm -hmm. or I don't, I think that's the wrong term. But well, that's what, yes. what we used. But when, husky like, plus sizes, yeah. um, teenage um, sizes, um, good looking clothes. Yeah. Like what you would dress your child to go into school. Um, we, tr you know, and Walmart clothes are great and Target clothes are great, but we want these kids to feel empowered. We want these kids to feel. I look like a million bucks going to school. So we try to get the brand names, and we try to, you know, the sneakers. They may not be new, but mm -hmm. we're going to wash them and we're going to scrub yeah. them with Magic Eraser, and they're going to go to school the next day, and they're like, I fit right in with the rest of these kids. No one knows any different. I'm so glad you said that because a lot of people, when they donate, they donate stuff that is doesn't fit anyone anymore, but it's been worn a million times, and yeah. there might be a stain that doesn't come out, yes. or a big yellow stain on a white shirt, or yeah. you know, a rip here, or it's so out of style. And yes. And really, that's not what you want. We want this, like, just, you said it so perfectly. Yeah. You want them to feel like a million bucks. Yes. So it is like your vineyard, you know, yes. your vineyard vines or your, um, Nike. Know, they Ralph like Lauren, the, the Nike, Nike and the Adidas. All that under yes, armor, all, that. all yeah. that stuff. It's so important because it really makes, they're just clothes, but it makes a big difference. It does make I a mean, difference. I mean, you remember yeah. being, yes. especially middle school, yes. right? Exactly. I mean, it makes yes. a huge difference. So that would be great. And when, how would they donate? Um, they can come to drop. We have two locations in Braintree and, and Kingston, oh, but Braintree. they can really just drop right off at my house. Uh, it's nine page ab, and I'm sure <laughs> if it's a sunny day, you're going to see along the side of my house is always someone's always dropping off something. Like my kids are like, there's someone at the door. Oh, they're just dropping off yeah. something. And I'll wave and say thank you. But um, anytime that it's not raining and it's semi nice weather, just you can come by and just drop them off at the side of my house. And can I suggest they do it in bins and not paper bags? Um, or like trash bags yeah. or. Yeah, something. So, something that's uh, in case it does rain. <laughs> and hangers. Did you need hangers at one point? Yes, too? At, well, yes, we take hangers too. And yes. the shopping bags. And we love, yes, um, the, we're always in need of the Marshalls bags the Mar and the yeah. T TJ Maxx kind of bags because yeah. um, th that gives us like, you could put like a week's worth of um, outfits in there um, n neatly and nicely. 
So at the Foster Closet, do you also offer, so you have your clothing, your shoes, do you do diapers and, you know, sanitary yes. napkins for girls and yes. like that type of thing? Yeah, we do diapers. Um, we have loads of diapers. We do um, formula. Um, formula is hard to keep um, because it, it expires very right. quickly, but we, we do um, keep a supply of formula. We have an agency that we work with that supplies us some feminine products every Great. month. So we have plenty of feminine products. And uh, do they donate that? They, it's all donated, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. going to be hard to be a, an adolescent or a teenage you know. girl, yes. you know, going yes. into foster homes and worrying about that. So yes. that's wonderful. Yeah, it is, yeah, yes. Important. And then the toys is our big, we're going into um, Christmas, and oh, that's yeah. our biggest event. Um, we collect toys um, all year um, because we give close to 1,000 toys away at, um, wow. at Christmas, all new toys to, I think we did, uh, helped um, I th 65 families um, last year with multiple kids. Um, that's amazing. So, yeah. So if someone wants to do that, like my family does, you know, I always like the older yes. kids. Yeah. How could they do that? How could they sponsor someone they, for Christmas or help with gifts? Or they can uh, they can um, contact us through our um, Facebook page, South Shore Foster Closet, um, and, and message us, and we can um, we can we always have someone that needs something, um, especially this time of year. Um, so we'll be able to help um, give them generalizations of um, what's needed. We also have an Amazon wish list, which is out on our um, Facebook page, which has um, toys that we, you know, that we need a lot of larger toys. Yeah. Um, and that's sometimes hard for people to buy the larger toys, and that's what we really need to be on our wish list. There's also winter jackets, um, there's sneakers. Mm -hmm. um, those are like our made things right now of going into winter and going into Christmas that we yeah. need. That's wonderful. So going back to the children, because you, you've seen so many. Do you know how many you've had in your house? Yeah, as of yesterday, with the one that I had yesterday, 91. Wow. Yes. And so, you know, many of them, like people say, 91? How did you have 91 kids over six and a half years? But many of them are there for a night or they're right. for, there for the weekend. And they go, I help them um, get regulated into the system. And then they find, hopefully they find family that can, they can go to, or there's, um, uh, you know, another foster parent that's has room, more, better room or more, uh, you know, is better equipped for this child. And have you seen some, so you had your first year, six yes. and a half years ago, have you ever seen any more come through or have you seen them later after they were adopted? And yes, there's several that have been ad adopted um, that lived with me for, um, until they were adopted and I, I see them on a, I see many of them on a, well not many, there's a handful of them on a regular basis. Um, they'll come and visit, they'll come to the house and visit uh -huh. or uh, you know, face, I'll watch them on Facebook and it just makes me cry. I was going to say it must. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what do you hope that these children take away from your house? Um, I don't um, want them to take away that they remember me or Katie or yeah. Thomas or the fruit roll-ups or the, the toys we had. Yeah. I just want them to remember that they were loved mm -hmm. and uh, treated with kindness. Um, and whatever they learned at our house, they, they, they took with us. Um, it doesn't matter if, if they can't remember my name or remember what our house looks like, but that they started this, this basis and it, it worked from a crappier life that maybe they had before they came and I made it a little bit better. That's all that matters. That weekend or that night or that year that they lived with me. Or that trip. Or the trip. Or that yeah. wonderful trip or yes. the camping and I know you have to go to Outer Banks and yes. I think you've been to Hawaii too, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. And someone was very lucky because I think you just... I took one of them to yeah. Hawaii. <laughs> Can yes. you imagine? Yeah. That, I mean, that's a trip of a lifetime for anyone. So yes. what a great experience. Yes. Wow. Well, we're so grateful for you. Oh, I have thank to say, you. I'm grateful that you're my friend. <laughs> thank you. And I've known you for a long time, but this is amazing what you do. Yeah, no, it's just, it's, uh, it's just you something I, I like to do. I know that. <laughs> I know that. But from someone looking on the outside, it's amazing. And we do need more people like you. Um, so if you were to encourage anyone to be a foster parent, what would you have to say? I would have to say that think long and hard about it mm -hmm. because it's, it's not the easiest right. um, route to go. Um, but I have cha only changed for the better. I've changed in many ways. Um, and I've seen a lot of sadness. I've seen things that burn in your head that you really don't want to ever, ha um, you wish didn't burn in your head. Yeah. Um, but um, I've come out on the other side as um, stronger, better, um, not for what I do for other people, but what I've, I've gotten from the, all these kids. Like yeah. it just the hugs and the kisses just alone are, are worth it. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. 
And you, will you continue to foster, do you think, after you adopt your daughter? Um, yes, for, um, for a while. I have, my, I have two other um, foster children right now. Okay. Um, so I will at least um, stick through, I think this is going to be a couple of years with, with at least one of them. Um, so, you know, just see how it goes. But, yeah, I definitely will continue in some form of helping foster children for the unforeseeable future, yes. So before we let you go, yeah. can you just tell everybody again how they can contact you for the foster closet? So you do have a Facebook page. Yes. Tell the address of your house again and where the foster closet is, the days yeah. it's open, okay. just so people know. So um, the Facebook page is um, South Shore Foster Closet. Um, you just look it up and you can message us or comment. Um, and um, you, um, uh, Use clothes, um, brand new toys, diapers, shoes, formula um, can be dropped off at Nine Page Ave, Kingston, anytime that it's it's sunny out at the side of my house <laughs> under under the mermaid sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, any foster families, adoptive families, kinship families can come and shop at Duxbury Baptist Church, 2 Tremont Street, Duxbury, off of the old Exit 10. I don't know what the I know, I don't either. <laughs> um, on Mondays and Wednesdays from 6 to 7.15 in Wonderful. the White House in the back. Oh, so exciting. Yeah. Now, do you take volunteers before I let you go? Do you need volunteers to help? We don't the usually, uh, okay. we haven't been, um, but uh, on occasions we do. So if you, you know, in your message, if you want to volunteer, we, we might not say we have anything right now, but we'll keep, keep your name. Yes. Great. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much okay. for coming. I no, really appreciate no, it. Thank you for having me. And we'll talk soon. Okay. All Great. right. Thank you. And congratulations on your new daughter. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's wonderful. Thank Thanks. We'll be right back with the State House Minute. On each episode of Profiles, I like to take a minute to take my constituents out of the 12th Limit District and provide a quick update of what's going on up on Beacon Hill. After the end of October, the Massachusetts House of Representatives passed a $3.82 billion spending bill to address COVID recovery needs. The legislation was funded through the Federal American Rescue Plan Act as well as surplus dollars from the state's fiscal year 21 budget. The bill addressed needs in housing, the environment, and climate change mitigation, economic development, workforce development, health and human services, and education. I am happy to announce that I was able to secure numerous amendments to bring back some of these funds for the 12th Plymouth District. This money will go a long way to helping the district recover from COVID, and more beyond, it will be numerous improvements to our community. The amendments include money for Silver Lake Regional High School to upgrade and replace their HVAC system, the Jones River Village Historical Society to offset lost revenue, the Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce to support small businesses, the Town of Halifax to replace water bubblers with bottle refill stations in town buildings, and the Town of Plimpton for conservation and recreation improvements. This bill now heads to the Senate where they will debate amendments of their own. From there, the legislation will go to conference committee to rectify the differences between the House and the Senate versions. This legislation is a huge win for the district and for the Commonwealth. I want to thank Sharon for joining us today and for sharing her story of going through all the stages of the adoption foster process. She has touched the lives of so many children across the Commonwealth, and I am thankful to have such a dedicated person in my district. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join us next month for Profiles with myself, Kathy Lenatra.